Welcome to Location, Cabrini College's weekly news program. I'm Nicole Capizzi. And I'm Molly Fox. Here's your weekly update. This past week at Villanova University, the Mendel Hall Science Building was evacuated because of a chemistry experiment gone wrong. Several people became sick from an unknown odor. Local emergency responders were on the scene investigating the cause of the incident. According to Radnor Police, 10 people were injured and treated at the Bryn Mawr Hospital after going through decontamination procedures. Come enjoy a piano concert performed by Taiwanese pianist Ching Young Hu. This event will take place this Sunday, February 17th at the Cabrini Mansion. The performance will last from 3 to 5.30 p.m. and is free and open to the public. If you're a food enthusiast, then Passyunk Avenue in South Philly has a unique food event for you. A food tour will take place Tuesday, February 19th from 7 to 9 p.m. It will cost $45 for four tasty restaurant options, and the exact restaurants won't be known until the day of the event. For more information, visit dishcrawl.com backslash philly or campusphilly.com. With May graduation coming up, students' loans are on seniors' minds. Val had a chance to speak with seniors and staff about how to prepare for student loans. Graduating seniors have high hopes for a career or continuing school, but do they know how they're going to pay off their student loans once the six months is up? Let's take a look. Now, to be honest, Obama's plan really, as much as it helps students, if a lot of students consolidate, which a lot of kids that with loans do, it doesn't help because they can't, you know, they still have to pay the interest on their uh, subsidized loans. And it also takes another 2% out of your weekly pay, so. From my own experience, when I was here, I had earned, I think, around $7,000 and just had, like, spent it on Campus Corner and, um, other things going out with my friends and a lot of trips to Wawa. Um, looking back on it, I wish I had put some money away and started repaying them back when I was here because when you get out of college, you're hit with um, loans. You're hitting. You're hit with paying back loans six months after graduation, and if you start paying them back now, it's going to be less later. I think it's also important to be knowledgeable about how much you are going to owe, knowing how much you take out to each semester. Um, being aware, maybe sitting down with your parents and filling out your FAFSA so you know how much you're, you know, you're being charged per semester and um, just knowing where that money's coming from. I'm Valerie Ruiz, on location, for location. That was your trip around the block. So Kevin, give us the update on sports this week. Well, the basketball playoffs are just about ready to start and Cabrini's teams are still on a roll. Let's take a look. Cavalier basketball continues its dominance in the CSAC. Both the men's and women's teams locked down the top seed in the upcoming CSAC tournament with wins this past week. The Lady Cavs claimed the top spot after winning their 15th straight game, a 79-55 route over Gwynedd Mercy College last Wednesday. They have two games remaining on the regular season and have earned an automatic berth in the CSAC semifinal on Wednesday, February 20th. The men's team defeated Rosemont College 96-66 to clinch the top seed in the CSAC tournament. They will play in the CSAC semifinal on Tuesday, February 19th. The Flyers held on for a 3-2 win over the Winnipeg Jets on Tuesday night. Braden Shen, Kimo Timonen, and Ty McGinn scored goals in the victory, improving the Flyers to 6-7-1 on the season. They continue their six-game road trip with games against the New Jersey Devils and Montreal Canadiens this weekend. The Sixers fell to 22-28 with a 107-90 loss to the Los Angeles Clippers on Monday night. They faced the Milwaukee Bucks on Wednesday before taking a week off for the NBA All-Star break. Spring training is underway for the 2013 season, and several of the Philly stars have already reported to Clearwater in preparation for opening day on April 1st. The Phillies enter camp with several new members, including Ben Revere, Michael Young, Delman Young, and Mike Adams. What are your expectations for the Phillies' 2013 season? Tweet us your thoughts at Location News. Tune in next week for a look at the CSAC playoffs, as well as updates on all things in Philly sports. Now here's Molly with your trip across the nation. For folks in the Northeast, the blizzard is over, but the shoveling isn't. The huge blizzard broke records last week. Temperatures dropped from the mid to low 20s, causing dangerously icy roads. 
President Obama announced that Connecticut was in a state of emergency with the heaviest snowfall. The city of Hamden, Connecticut got a whopping 40 inches, which has been causing some issues for residents. But on Sunday and Monday, things returned to normal as the sun was shining and some snow starting to melt. The Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture is investigating the deaths of two horses minutes apart at the Meadows Racetrack and Casino in Washington, Pennsylvania. Officials of the racetrack say the eight-year-old horse, Isabella, suffered some sort of respiratory distress and died as she prepared for the race on Saturday. Another horse, seven-year-old Tricky, died while running the race. Michael Jennot, president of the Meadows Racetrack, said he hasn't seen anything like this in his 20 years being there. A Fairfield, Connecticut couple knows a thing or two about making a marriage work. 101-year-old John and 98-year-old Anna Bear had been married for 80 years, making them the longest married couple in the U.S. The couple tied the knot on November 25, 1932. They met in Bridgeport, Connecticut, where they were next-door neighbors. According to John, he loved her the moment he saw her. John and Anna can't believe they hold the record, but look forward to their lasting years together. And now, let's go to Rocco to see what students and staff have been saying about women in the front line. This is Rocco Damonti, on location for location, and today we are covering women in the military. Let's go to student and faculty at Cabrini College to see their opinion. You know, my viewpoints on women being involved in the front line now, um, I take the stance that it's an entitlement. Um, I do believe that women should have that choice. In my opinion regarding women fighting in combat, I'm actually really surprised that it's taken this long until 2013, although they've been able to fight in artillery and um, backup and reinforcement units. Um, like I was saying, it's just really surprising that it's taken however many years for them to be able to fight on the front lines. Um, do I see that changing, possibly the whole game? Uh, I do. I do. I think that women will bring uh, different attributes, um, a different way of thinking to um, a part of, of warfare that has never seen that before. Um, it's a choice that they're making and they know um, all the issues that come along with it and all the problems and dangers and if it's a personal choice if they have the right to vote if they have the right to do anything um, they deserve the same opportunity to do this according to Leon Panetta uh, the defense secretary already 15 percent of women are involved in our military so do I think that women should have the right to decide where in the military they work yes I do um, do I think by involving them that they possibly could bring to the table different ways of communication? Um, I do. Uh, can it change how things have been done in the past? It probably will. You heard a few other opinions. Tell us yours by posting on our Facebook page or tweeting us on our Twitter. Now back to the news desk. That was your trip across the nation. So Christine, what's going on in entertainment this week? Well, the um, Grammy Awards were just this past Sunday, mm -hmm. so let me tell you more about it. The 55th Annual Grammy Awards were held this past Sunday night live from the Staples Center in Los Angeles. The show was slow to kick in with only one award being handed out in the first 40 minutes of the ceremony. Adele was last year's big Grammy winner and she claimed the first award of the night at Sunday's ceremony as well. Perhaps the most surprising award of the night was one of the biggest. Folk rock group Mumford & Sons won their Album of the Year for Babel. Jokes were flying, both on stage and off, about the infamous CBS memo ordering performers to cover up. Singer Jennifer Lopez showed a lot of leg in her black gown and announced on stage, as you can see, I read the memo. Yes, you did, JLo. The party didn't stop when the Grammy Awards came to an end. After Sunday night's big show in LA, Katy Perry, John Mayer, Rihanna, Chris Brown, Adele, and tons of more music biggest names hit the hot and happening after hour parties continuing the celebration. That was your entertainment update. Now here's Nicole with your trip around the world. On Monday, Esquire released a gloomy profile of the unidentified Navy SEAL who says he killed bin Laden with two shots to the forehead during the May 2011 raid in Pakistan. The now retired shooter, as he is called in an exclusive interview with Esquire, is unemployed has no pension or health benefits, and is separated from his wife, the magazine reports. 
The story, written by Phil Bronstein, recounts that the SEAL has survived a stretch of suicidal thinking since the White House identified SEAL Team 6 as the team that killed bin Laden. Following his heroism in Pakistan, the shooter retired from the military after a 16-year career. If he had stayed for 20 years, he would have been eligible for full benefits. The news that Pope Benedict XVI is stepping down shocked the world's 1.2 billion Roman Catholics. After hearing the news, his spokesman released a statement saying that the Pope isn't suffering from any specific disease that forced him to resign, but he's resigning because he doesn't feel he has the mental and physical strength to continue as the Church's leader. Benedict remains Pope until February 28th, when his resignation takes effect. Pope Benedict XVI is the first Pope to resign in nearly 600 years. He will hold the final audience in Vatican City's St. Peter's Square on February 27th. North Korea has carried out its third most powerful nuclear test since UN warnings and said even stronger action might follow. It described the test as a self-defensive measure necessitated by the continued hostility of the U.S. Its main ally, China, criticized the test, which was condemned worldwide. Nuclear test monitors in Vienna say the underground explosion had doubled the force of the 2009 test, despite reportedly involving a smaller device. The North's recent propaganda has used words and images that imply a threat to the United States, but analysts dismiss the prospect that Pyongyang is willing or able to carry out a military attack on U.S. soil. Thanks for catching up with us this week. For Location Weekly News, I'm Nicole Capizzi. And I'm Molly Fox. Please be sure to check us out on Twitter and YouTube. Simply search Location News. Now here's Jenna Rose to Giacomo to chat with some Cabrini students about what their Valentine's Day plans are. Happy Valentine's Day, Cabrini. Welcome to another episode of Bless Your Heart with Jenna Rose Giacomo. I'm Jenna Rose Giacomo, and on today's Bless Your Heart, we're going to be talking about Valentine's Day. Yes. Some love it, some hate it, but you know what? It's Valentine's Day. I'll probably be doing what I do every Valentine's Day, which is fantasize about the moment when I do find my Italian, and I can have my perfect Italian family and Italian children. Working at the library. <laughs> oh. We're going to go see Warm Bodies and probably go get dinner somewhere. Well, I eat cookies, first of all. Well, I want to take him out to eat Aww. because he got me a really good Christmas gift. So I want to be the one to give him something for Valentine's Day. Oh, I honestly have no idea. That's OK. Wish I could tell you, but he won't tell me. John? I'm going to the melting pot. Um, candlelight dinner on a boat in like New York or something, I don't know. You are Italian, please come and find me. Please, seriously. <laughs> Matt. So you would give your so you would give your future girlfriend a cake? Yeah. Um just being with the people you love. Love is not a feeling, it's an action. Exciting. Best friend. Being your complete self with that person. Spontaneity. Trust. You go out of your way to comfort somebody. Compete. <laughs> Commitment. Happy Valentine's Day, Cabrini. See you in two weeks. 